Welcome to module 28. We now introduce quotient spaces. Last time, we tried to understand what is the meaning of a quotient set in three different ways. Just giving a surjective function on a given set to another set is one way. Defining an equivalence relation is another way and writing x as a disjoint union of non-empty open sets is the third way so all these things are equivalent that's what we have seen one of the important sources of these quotients even at set theoretic level is what is called as what is known as group actions group action on a set you know gives you certain kind of decomposition of a set and that happens to be a big source an important source an interesting source of quotient sets so let us recall this notion maybe you have come under uh, group actions while studying groups itself So let us assume that you know what is the meaning of a group and so on. So let G be any group and X be any set. We have a map from G cross X to X. It is not a binary operation in the sense that it is not X cross X to X now. Neither G cross G to G. It is G cross X to X is a mixture of this one. So G is acting on X. It is going to be defined via this map and this map is just it's not F or G or something, standard notation. It is the circ. Usually, dot or circ is used for writing compositions of, you know, multiplications, multiplication inside a, a group and so on. And that is why this is coming here. Okay. So, what we will do is, we will, we will have a, a manageable and easy to understand notation. The circ operating upon G comma X, we will write it as G circ X. Okay. When even this circ is too much, we will not just write anything. We, will, we may write it G H also, G X also. Just like when we write multiplication of two real numbers or two complex numbers. So that will be the next stage of simplification. Right now, we will keep this circ. Okay. So G of uh, circ of G comma X is written as G circ X. So this operation, okay, whatever you want to say, action and so on, has following two fundamental properties. The first one is the identity. Identity element E is an identity of G. Identity operates identically. E of X is X itself for all X, where G is the identity element. The second one is the associativity. GH operating upon X is same thing as first G, actually layer last G, G operating upon H of X, H operating upon X. So G is circ, H circ, X is same thing as G, H of X. The bracket can be put in the first place or the other way around. So that is the associativity. So this must be true for all G and H inside G and all X inside X. That's all. As soon as you have such a map defined, you can see that fix a G, look at X going to G, X that becomes a bijection of the set X. Why? Because the inverse of this bijection, inverse of this function is nothing but X going to G inverse X. 
okay g is an element of the group so it has g inverse right so g inverse operative upon g is the same thing as g g inverse which is identity which is this one so only these two operations are used so you see that each g you know the action of g that is why it is called action of g sends elements of x here and there but in a bijective fashion that is means a permutation so each element of the group g can be thought of as a permutation then associativity again says that this association from x g to the permutation groups that itself is a homomorphism okay first g first g h is same thing as first h and then g so that is the meaning of this one so what you get is so first of all what you get is this one rho g if i write just for uh, fun rho g of x is gx that means it's action of g is rho g is a now function from x to x and it is invertible so it is an element of the permutation group sigma x that rho is the association here g to so permutation group that itself becomes a homomorphism identity element rho of identity what is it it is e compose e operative upon x so it's x itself so it's identity map identity permutation right and rho g inverse of this this is why it is these are all permutations okay so here the decomposition is what i have talking is precisely for each x let us have this notation gx what is called as orbit of so the word orbit is used as if these are satellites moving around you see that is the whole idea so g of x where g ranges okay image of the point x all the time x g x g n x g 2 x g 3 x look at all those things so that is called the orbit of x or called g x okay the point is if you take if you take another y either g y will be the whole of g x itself or it will never intersect so that is that is obvious because of the group g is there okay and identity of x is x itself okay so that is why it forms a partition of x it's easy to verify gx intersection gy is non empty means that element can be taken to span gx as well as gy so they are they are equal if it is non empty it is the whole thing that means it is you know partition this is exactly the way you would have taken the subgroups and when you have subgroup the its cosets right cosets are all disjoint similarly left cosets are disjoint so these are like cosets here okay this notation can be used as the g cosets of x okay so nobody says that there is a different word here they are orbits of x okay so clearly this forms a partition and we have a quotient function put y equal to set of all partitions gx x belong to x x goes to gx is the surjective function so it's a quotient function the partition is same thing as giving quotient function or you can also say that x1 is related to x2 if and only if there is a g which will push x1 to x2 g of x1 equal to x2 this becomes a equivalence relation and these three concepts are the same so you can use whichever one you like as pointed out last time for more general things now here is a special case arising out of the action of g on x okay the orbit space is another name for this decomposition space set of all orbits of 
of the action. So that is I have denoted by y temporarily because this is x. It may be something else. It may be r. It may be r two. It may be r two minus zero. Various examples are there. Okay. So at least some examples we will have to discuss. So for each fixed g, we have seen that the rho g, namely action of g on x, is a permutation. Okay. Conversely, suppose you start with a homomorphism from the group G to the set of permutations, the group of permutations. Okay, suppose this is homomorphism. Then I will define a circ operation corresponding to tau. That is why I have written this as circ tau from G cross X to X by just tautologically how whatever I have got here, just like rho G. So this is going to be tau G. So tau G of X. Will give you the action, namely G circ tau x. So this is the formula for the action. Now, if you take the corresponding row here, it will be nothing but tau. Okay. For each starting with the action, I have defined a group homomorphism in a row, right? Similarly, starting with a group homomorphism, I can define the action, and this will be a bijective correspondence, one to one correspondence. Thus. When you want to mention an action, you can just mention a group homomorphism from G to sigma x. For instance, suppose this homomorphism is trivial homomorphism. Trivial homomorphism is genuine homomorphism; it is allowed. What is the meaning of this? G of x is equal to x for all x for all G. So this is called trivial action, no action. Okay. So it's inner inner reaction, inertia. So that is also allowed. All right, depending upon various properties of the homomorphism, there are various classes of actions, various types of actions. Okay, all that we will discuss whenever the situation arises. We are, we just don't want to get stuck with the group actions. This is one source. It's just uh, to mention, and we want to go ahead with our concept of quotient spaces. Okay, All right. So there is a correspondence between group actions and group homomorphism from G to permutation. The special case: suppose G is a subgroup of uh, so G is a subgroup. H is a subgroup of G. Then you have the group multiplication g cross g to g restricted to h cross g to g, as if you treat now g as a set and h as a group. Okay, but but the multiplication is coming from g, so h g going to h into g. I am now I am writing no circle as the try here. This is the action. This is called left action. Because H is getting multiplied on the left, I could have written it on the other side also. H comma G going to G H, then that will be a right action. Okay, so left action, right action are all possible. The corresponding orbits of the left action are nothing but the right cosets. Okay, so you have to write H and little G. Where G belongs to G, those are the orbits of this action. So they are right cosets. Similarly, if you take right action, you will get left cosets. So be sure of that. So the things are uh, left and right are getting interchanged here. Huh? An important special case is the action of additive subgroup Z contained inside the additive group R, the real numbers. Okay, see, first I consider arbitrary group acting on an arbitrary set. Then I said you can take the set to be the group G and the group to be the subgroup, any subgroup. Okay, now I am taking a further special case, namely R is the additive group and Z is its subgroup. Okay, Z is integers. Okay. 
look at the left cosets here, namely, I have denoted again it by y, denote the set of left cosets or right cosets, they will be same here because r is commutative. The additive group is abelian group. So left and right doesn't make a difference here, that's all. Okay. Look at this map in a different way, entirely different way. Namely, G going to G G map the map G R going to e power sorry G T going to e power two pi i t two pi e raised two pi i t is an element of what complex number of modulus one which is S one right so you get a map from R to S one G T I have written as e power two pi i t we know that this is surjective. Right. We also know that GT is equal to GS if and only if the difference is an integer. I put 2 pi IIT here. Okay. If and only it is an integer. Okay. So this follows now it follows that the orbits of this action Y is in 1 1 correspondence with elements of S1. If this G hat is a map from Y to S1 in, in, induced by map R to S1. The orbits of this G action are nothing but the fibers of G. That is the meaning of this one. See, they are fibers of this element. GT equal to GS, you will go to the same point. The T minus S is an integer means they are, you know, S belongs to Z plus T or T belongs to Z plus S, which is S. T belongs to Z plus S, that is also correct. So they are nothing but the right cosets or left cosets. Right? So once you have an action, decomposition, surjective map. Okay. Equivalence relation. These are all equal. Now I am thinking of this as a surjective function. What is that function? It is precisely this. Integers are sent to 1 here. All the integers go to the complex number 1 here. This is the map. So this is a wonderful map. It has a lot of topological analytic properties that will be exploited to study this. This is a very fundamental result here, right? Fundamental uh, example. Okay, the right cosets of this action are in one one correspondence with the set of complex numbers of modulus one. So this example we will meet again and again. Huh? So here there is a topology also, you see, though we never bothered about topology so far. This is a subgroup of a group, that's all I have used. All right, so let us bring in the topology now. That is quotient spaces. Start with any topological space and a surjective function, set theory function to y. Put tau prime equal to all those subsets of y, we contain inside y, such that their inverse image inside x is an element of tau that is inverse image of q uh, inverse image of b under q is open in x okay you see why we want such a thing we want this function the important function the subjective function which is going to define partition or whatever that function I want it to be continuous. There is a topology here. So I am using that topology. In that topology, it must be continuous. Means I have to put a topology here. So that is the trick I am doing here. Take tau prime equal to B contained inside Y such that Q inverse of B is inside tau. Verify that tau prime is a topology on Y. This kind of things we have done several of them, right? Several maps together we have also done at one time. Q inverse of pi i inverse of S1, whatever. So this is very straightforward. 
If you take empty Z, inverse image is empty. If you take the whole space Y, inverse image is the whole space X. Take B1 intersection B2, Q inverse of B1 intersection B2 is Q inverse of B1 intersection Q inverse of B2. Inverse of sets is a very well, well behaved operation. Okay. So you have a topology on Y now. Okay. This topology is called the quotient topology. Okay. The name is induced by X, which is actually wrong. But this is the, the term used. So I am using that. Later on, you will see that. that right now, you don't have that one. This is actually co-induced by X is the correct term. So it's co-induced by later on you have keep saying co-induced, but this terminology is used. The quotient space induced by etc. So this is the map itself is now continuous surjection. This is called quotient map. Quotient map, as soon as you say, it is not just arbitrary continuous surjection, it is giving you the topology of Y, topology on Y, it prescribe, what is it prescription? Something is open in Y, if filled only, if Q inverse B is inside tau. Something is open, if filled only, Q inverse is open. There is nothing else here, that is the only condition. So that is the meaning of that quotient map. given a topological space x and a surjective function q from x to y the quotient topology on y which you have defined just now is the largest topology with respect to which q is continuous you see i could have taken the indiscrete topology on y automatically q will be continuous Maybe that is too small a topology, but it is continuous. So there are topologies. You take the biggest one. Okay. If you put more, more open sets inside Y, then Q will not be open set. Q will not be continuous function. So it is the biggest one. You take the biggest one which exists, which we know. Okay. So how to do that? Why is this biggest one? We will see. So this is a claim, this is not a definition. Definition we have already got given. So let tau 1 be a topology on y such that q from x tau to y tau 1 is continuous. Then I must show that tau 1 is contained inside this tau prime. Tau prime is defined here. That is the meaning of this largest. Okay. Given u in tau 1, because it's continuous, q inverse of u belongs to tau. But the moment q inverse of something belongs to tau, this that that something will be inside tau prime. So if q in b put b equal to u here, q inverse u is tau, so that u will be inside tau prime over. Okay. So that means that this tau prime is the largest topology. Okay. Next thing is Suppose you have this quotient map. Now, topology on X is fixed, topology on Y is fixed. So this is the quotient map, okay? Suppose you have a function F from X to another space inside. Okay? So it's a continuous map such that Fx1 equal to Fx2 whenever Qx1 is equal to Qx2. So Qx1 equal to Qx2 implies Fx1 equals 2. Okay. Then there exists a unique map F hat, F twiddle from Y to Z such that this F twiddle composite Q here, first come Q and then F twiddle. That is you are given F. F twiddle composite Q is F. The existence of this map as a function, we have already seen yesterday. Okay, whenever q1 equal to q1x equal to q x x1 equal to qx2, 
effects on your this is the condition that gives you this map f twiddle why this f twiddle is continuous that's what you have okay this existence and uniqueness we have already seen in the in our lemma in uh, yesterday's lecture so we have to prove that f twiddle is continuous so let a be an open set in z this z is an arbitrary space I want to show that its inverse image is open here. When a when a subset is open here, its inverse image here must be open. So what is f twiddle inverse followed by q inverse? That is nothing but inverse of f twiddle composite q operating upon that set. But f twiddle in composite q is f, so it's f inverse. But f is continuous. So start with an open set. Its inverse image here is continuous, right? But that is the hypothesis. Now, why f twiddle is continuous? Take an open set here. Come here. This is open. You fill down the inverse image of this one under Q is open. That is where the role of f inverse of that one is open comes. Okay, f inverse of some A. Is Q inverse of f twiddle of A, right? Q inverse of f twiddle of A, it will be open because it's Q inverse Q, will be open because it's f inverse of A. Therefore, f twiddle inverse of A is open. Okay. Take a quotient map given any function from y to z, where z is a topological space. This function is continuous if and only composed with f is continuous. Against this picture, you have some function here. Okay. Here, when I have this function f, okay, I, it introduces a function here. This is continuous if this is continuous. Now, what I am doing? I am taking a function here. When this one is continuous. Is what I am asking. If this is continuous, composed with Q, that will be continuous, right? Because composite of continuous functions continuous. But here is a case. Even if you don't assume this is continuous, suppose the composite is continuous, then this should then then f its f twiddle itself will continue. That is the hypothesis here. That is the statement here. Given now f if f is from y to z, this f was from x to z here. So it is this f is playing the role of my f twiddle here. Okay. So notations are different here. All right. If since q is continuous, f is continuous implies the composite is continuous. That is okay. Conversely, suppose f composite q is continuous. Now I want to show that f is continuous. Given any open set U in z. We have Q inverse of F inverse of U is F composite Q inverse of U. The rule is the same. You see, now this is open is given. Therefore, the inside thing is open here by definition of the quotient topology. Okay, the proof similar looks similar, but it is giving different results here. Huh? Every surjective Continuous open map is a quotient map. Instead of open, you can put a closed row. A closed map is also and satisfy this property. When you say closed map, I always mean continuous and closed. When I say open map, I mean the continuous and open. Okay. The extra thing is that they must be surjective. Unless you have surjectivity, you can't get a quotient, right? So surjectivity is set theoretic. Continuity is needed. Open map is extra. That will ensure that it's a quotient map. Just continuous surjection it does not imply that the map is a quotient map. So let us go through the proof here. Start with any open set here. Start with any set here. 
शो दैट इट इज ओपन इफ एंड ओनलीज क्यू यूनिवर्स इज ओपन बोथ वेज यू हैव शोर स्टार्ट विथ एनी सेट यू इफ इट्स ओपन देन क्यू यूनिवर्स ओपन इफ क्यू यूनिवर्स इज ओपन देन यू इज ओपन दैट इज वॉट यू हैव शो सो फर्स्ट एज्यूम यू इज ओपन then continuity of q will give you q inverse is open so here this easy part now suppose q inverse of u is open why u must be open if it's a quotient topology then it will be but we don't know that we are proving that it's a quotient topology that is why we have to prove this one suppose q inverse u is open we have to show that u is open the first suppose you take the case when it is open mapping i have to show it for closed mapping also okay first take the case where q is open mapping open mapping means what image of an open set is open q of q inverse of u is open now okay now it is a lucky break that q inverse of q operating upon u is exactly u why because q is surjective in general it is not true it may be subset of u so surjectivity again plays a role here okay so this is equal to u if q inverse u is open q of that is open because q is open mapping therefore what we have proved is that u is open inside y if and only if its inverse image is open in x which means that it is a quotient map now the same thing can be done for closed set also by just little de morgan law you have to use i will skip it you can read it the quotient map construction opens the flood gates of geometric topology to us we can now stay study a large class of very interesting geometric objects via topology as anticipated group action is one of the important sources of quotient spaces there are many other sources okay so we have to study one by one some of these examples okay so group action what is the topology coming where is it coming that's what i have to explain otherwise you have only quotient set right so this is where we make a definition take a topological space and an action of a group on it namely mentioned by a group homomorphism like this this group homomorphism i am assuming the extra condition i told you extra conditions on the group homomorphism will do different types of actions right so i am putting in extra condition here what is that this homomorphism is actually taking its values inside a smaller subgroup namely group of homeomorphism subsets self homomorphisms x to x any homomorphism is a bijection it is a permutation but i don't want discontinuous ones they must be continuous inverse must be also continuous that is the definition of a homeomorphism so take only those homeomorphism that is a forms a subgroup is very clear okay because composite of two homeomorphism is a homeomorphism and inverse of a homeomorphism is a homeomorphism by definition okay when you have this we call it a topological action you may wonder why all this is necessary you just take the quotient topological space is there okay there's a quotient set is there you can always give the quotient topology okay so that will have something to nothing to do with the group action group action is just set theory or group theory whatever algebra and it's a topology is two different things you want to bring them together and this is one way of there may be many other ways also okay depending upon the context that you want this is the way take that me now what does it mean is that all these row g's are homeomorphisms that's all remember all these row g's are elements of permutation but now they are homeomorphisms 
एसोसिएटेड क्वेश्चंट मैप पर एक्स टू आई वेर वाई डी नोट द ऑर्बिट स्पेस ऑफ एस दिस विल हैव सम स्पेशल प्रॉपर्टीज विच वॉज नॉट पॉसिबल इन द जनरल सिचुएशन ऑफ ए ग्रुप एक्शन ओके सो दैट इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू स्टडी नाउ let q from x to y be the associated quotient map of a topological action of a group g on the topological space x okay then this q itself is an open mapping in the previous theorem we proved that open surjective continuous surjective open mapping is a quotient map okay so this quotient maps which arise here they are open mappings remember a quotient map there is no condition that it should be open if it's open it will be quotient map is what we have verified okay all quotients arising out of topological group action they are open mappings so they are stronger questions in that sense they have better properties okay let us verify why this is an open mapping it is one line proof see all of things are one line proof here take an open set u we have to show that q u is open inside y why in this q u open q inverse of that is open inside x what is q inverse of q u what is q inverse of q u you have to understand that is nothing but you see all elements which are related to some element in q u they will be there so if you understand that then under rho g and the this rho action whatever this is just all the cosets of g rho g of u okay taken together union g over g Okay, so this is just verified. This one. What is Q U? U is some subset of X. Anything is it the equivalence classes here? When you take equivalence classes, what is the inverse image of equivalence classes? The union of all those classes. That is the meaning of this. Okay, is these are classes where class uh, members range over U. So it is. Rho g of u union. Now, what is rho g of u? Rho g is a homeomorphism from x to x. Just concentrate on one element g. Okay, multiplication by that on the left or right as an action. That is a homeomorphism, self-homeomorphism of x to x. So, rho g of u is also open for all g. Right. So, for union is also open. So that's all. so we have proved that the action given by a topological action sorry the topological action and the, the quotient space given quotient topology given by that the quotient map is an open mapping again i come back to some examples here this example is again the same as is e power 2 pi it okay so coming back to 2.56 the additive action z cross r to r namely integer comma a real number going to n plus t is additive action right corresponds to group homomorphism z going to hr hr is what all homeomorphisms of r here there are special homeomorphisms namely the translation by n so tn each n defines a translation what it does is here t is pushed to n plus t that's all these are called translations okay so tn of capital tn of t is n plus t these are translations what are the inverse image inverse is minus n t of minus n is the inverse of that inverse is here what additive inverse okay the so, translation homeomorphism so negative of tn is minus c so this defines a topological action of z on r 
let q from r to y be the associated quotient map where y is the orbit space okay we have already seen that this y is nothing but you know in one one correspondence with s1 the unit complex numbers we have already seen that right so we have also seen that exponential map g from r to s1 induces the bijection from y to s1 the cos right cosets of this action so by theorem 2.29 it follows that what you just now we did g is continuous g hat which was just a bijection is now continuous okay g hat is a continuous map now extra thing we have g is an open mapping why because this is given by this quotient map is given by group action right therefore g is an open mapping it follows that g hat is also an open mapping right see g hat different notations are there where you can use this if this is g this is g hat this happens to be s1 now okay this is an open mapping this will be an open mapping why take an open set here inverse image is open here take the image of that it is the same thing as image of this one okay so since f is open this will also open so g is op g is an open mapping f g hat will be open so open continuous bijection so that's how we model so the orbit space here okay is actually homeomorphic which is bijection we had proved now it's i have proved that it is homeomorphic to s1 so under this homeomorphism you can say that the quotient of x namely r modulo the action of integers is precisely equal to s1 okay here is a some algebra also coming here r is some group z is a subgroup which is actually normal because every subgroup is you know the whole group is abelian so every subgroup is normal quotient has a group structure also what is the group structure the multiplication of complex numbers you know that exponential function takes additivity additive things to uh, multiplication operation t plus s e power 2 pi i t plus s is same thing as e power 2 pi i t into e power 2 pi i s it becomes multiplication right so this s1 is the quotient group of of r just by group theoretically now we have put a extra condition it is a quotient space also okay so this example will be again and again will be with us all the time i will do one more example only touch upon this one a little bit this again group action first consider x to be the n plus 1 dimensional real space okay euclidean space minus the origin you can put the origin for a while but it doesn't help so minus the origin okay now you define the action here by scalar multiplication again throw away the zero so r minus zero okay scalar multiplication that's what i am doing x not x1 xn is an element of rn plus 1 not equal to 0 similarly y not y these two are equivalent equivalence relation i am deliberately doing this one if there is a non zero real number such that y not y1 yn is lambda times x not so this is a vector this is this is scalar multiplication this lambda must be non zero non zero real numbers form a group under multiplication of that group i am using action of that on this one this time rn plus 1 minus 0 is not a group 
okay this is a genuine group action there is no subgroup and so on this is not the special case as r contained inside and z contained inside r okay the set of equivalence classes together with the quotient topology that becomes a space that becomes a topological space it's called n dimension real projective space that is the definition and the notation is p power n there is a deliberate notation it's not a mistake it's not a misprint you start with n plus 1 then you write the corresponding as p n here observe that the equivalence classes can also be thought of as representatives of one dimensional subspace is in rn plus 1 why because take a take an element take its equivalence class they are all in the same line okay minus the origin you put back the origin just to make it a subspace that's why i told you you can keep the zero for a while but it doesn't help instead of that whenever you want it to put it back so when you think of this as a as a line passing through the origin you put back the origin for only for that purpose that's all okay so they they represent you see you want to represent the whole line what do you want you can't represent it by zero you take any other non zero vector the whole line is determined so that is the uh, geometry here so that is what we want to consolidating with this uh, equivalence relation okay observe that the equivalence classes can be thought of as a representative of one dimensional subspaces of r n plus if q from x to p n is a corresponding quotient map let us denote q x by the bracket x question is is q an open mapping you should have one line proof here what is that i already told you that this equivalence relation is tetra is given by group action what is the group r minus 0 is that action a topological action that is what you have to see what is the meaning of topological action multiplication by a non zero element should define a homeomorphism of course it is multiplication is continuous and its inverse is multiplication by lambda inverse <coughs> and that is also continuous therefore they are you know each each multiplication defines a homeomorphism therefore it is a topological action then you use the other theorem that we had whenever you have topological action the quotient map is an open map so that is the answer okay there may be different ways of seeing it okay you try to think of the different ways also it's very good because you would like to have different views of this projective space which is difficult to imagine and very difficult to draw pictures of okay once again i tell you that we will come back to this example again to study more properties of this thank you very much